What's up guys, back with another educational video and this week, again, we're talking about sugar. Now I know it's probably feeling like I'm beating a dead horse here because I've done about 50 sugar videos in the last year, but there was a new study that came out uh, looking at a 10 year cohort data of about 100,000 people looking at sugar intake and cancer incidents. Well, actually they were looking at a bunch of different nutritional factors, but this particular paper was about sugar. Kind of the interesting thing about this paper that got a lot of attention, they said that they controlled for weight gain. So one of the big confounding variables with looking at associations of sugar with cancer is that people who eat more sugar tend to eat more calories, tend to be heavier, and obesity, fat gain are all major risk factors for cancer. So before we get into that, what did the study actually find? They found that there was a significant association between cancer, all cancer incidents, and sugar intake, total sugar intake. They did find that there was a significant association between total sugar intake and cancer. Before we start breaking down this a little bit further, it's important to understand that correlation studies really can't prove causation. You can do different statistical things to sort of correct for different uh, confounding variables, but you can't do it for every single confounding variable. It's just not possible. But sometimes, especially with nutrition research, it's also impossible to do you know five-year randomized control trials. In these cases, large cohorts are kind of the best thing we have. Now, it's important to note that several other cohorts and even meta-analysis have failed to show much of an association of sugar with cancer. But this study was very highly powered with 100,000 people and it was done over a long period of time. What's important to point out, the headline is that sugar you know, causes cancer, um, is what everybody on Twitter has been sending to me. See, you're wrong, Lane, you're wrong. I think there's a few different things to point out. There's nothing wrong with the study. The study was a good study. The limitations and the interpretations, I believe, are being taken way too far. If you look at the actual data, they're looking at a risk factor between the lowest intake of sugar versus the highest intake of sugar. Uh, it's about a three times difference. I think it was like over 80 grams a day versus like under 25 grams a day in those two uh, quartiles. All the other quartiles of sugar showed no association with cancer. So even like up to you know 70 grams i think of sugar per day they didn't see a difference uh between that and the lowest quartile so that's important to point out the other thing that's really important to point out is they said they corrected for weight gain but if you look at the data the difference in calorie intake between the lowest quartile of sugar intake and the highest quartile was 700 calories per day. That is a huge difference. I, I'm not sure how they corrected for weight gain, but it seems odd that uh, there would be a correction for weight gain and yet calorie intake is still 700 calories higher amongst the high sugar consumers, which is, is not that surprising. I mean, uh, sugar, especially from sugar sweetened beverages, is not highly satiating. And most people, if they are drinking sugar sweetened beverages, are eating more total calories, which is a big confounding variable because as we're gonna talk about in a second, uh, some cancers are very energy driven, which brings me to my next point. The association of cancer with sugar was completely driven by the association with breast cancer. So breast cancer had a pretty robust uh, association with sugar intake and if, when they removed breast cancer as a factor, uh, they saw no association of sugar intake with cancer incidents with all other types of cancer. Now, within breast cancer, specifically premenopausal women, not postmenopausal women, were associated with breast cancer incidents and sugar intake. I guess for premenopausal women, maybe sugar is a problem. However, this is still in contradiction to some other studies that are out there. And again, there's the confounding variable of the calorie intake. And finally, the interesting thing is that sucrose, which is table sugar, was the sugar most closely associated with cancer incidents and breast cancer. But glucose and fructose were not. The glucose and fructose were not associated uh, with breast cancer. 
Now, that, the reason that's interesting is sucrose is made up of glucose and fructose. When we take in sucrose in our GI, specifically the small intestine, the duodenum, we release enzymes that break down sucrose into glucose and fructose. So if sucrose is having some unique effect on cancer incidence, it has to be before it reaches the duodenum where it's broken down into glucose and fructose because glucose and fructose did not have any association with cancer. So again, I don't want to completely dismiss this study. I think there's some cause for concern for premenopausal women and breast cancer. For all other cancers, it doesn't appear like there's a problem. And in fact, actually, um, colon cancer had an inverse association with sugar intake, which nobody on Twitter seemed to mention that. Now, do I think sugar is protective on colon cancer? No, I don't. But it's important to point out that, hey, if you're gonna show this thing, you also need to show all the data and talk about all of the data. It's funny that the same people propping up this study as proof that sugar causes cancer, when it's only breast cancer, also aren't saying that we should start eating more sugar to protect against colon cancer. Do I think that sugar is something we should be considering in the context of overall diet quality? Absolutely, absolutely. I don't think it's a good idea to consume a lot of sugar because if you do, your overall diet quality is probably pretty low. Do you need to be scared about having some sugar as part of an overall healthy diet? No, I don't think you do, not even based on this data. If you are a premenopausal woman who is predisposed to breast cancer, family history, all that kind of stuff, make sure you're not eating too many calories. And one of the ways you can do that is by limiting your sugar intake because sugar tends to not be very satiating. But do I think sugar mechanistically causes cancer based on this data, I don't think it's compelling for that. Because if sugar, specifically sucrose, is causing cancer, we would also expect glucose and fructose, which are the constitutive sugars that make up sucrose, to also have an association with cancer, and they don't. Now the authors speculate that perhaps the effect of sugar or sucrose on cancer is due to inflammation or oxidative stress. But it's really hard to make that argument, I think, when you look at the data showing that inflammation really isn't different between diets so long as calories are equated between diets. So I, I don't think that really explains it. And again, how is it having this unique effect on inflammation, whereas glucose and fructose aren't? Because glucose and fructose are what appear in the bloodstream. Sucrose is not what appears in the bloodstream. The bloodstream never sees sucrose. It only sees glucose and fructose. So again, if sucrose were having some unique effect on inflammation, which would lead to cancer, we'd expect glucose and fructose to also have that association with cancer and breast cancer, and we don't see that. So once again, I think that this is a study to add to the pile and keep watching. I personally, I'm not really gonna change my recommendations based on this data. Now, if 20 more cohorts come out with really strong associations with breast cancer and show the same things, and they also control for total calorie intake, then I'll get real worried and then maybe I'll change some of my recommendations. But based on this one study, no. And especially when it's still in opposition to some other studies that have come out and because of some of the limitations I've discussed. I am not saying you should eat sugar. I think in order to eat a healthy, overall balanced diet, consuming sufficient fiber, micronutrients, those sorts of things, it's probably a wise idea to mostly limit your sugar intake, especially added sugars, sugars that are you know, mostly empty calories. Fruit actually has an inverse association with cancer. Again, which Seems a little bit weird if sugar is causing cancer since fruit has sugar in it. Guys, if you like the video, please like and subscribe to the channel. Check out the links to some of our educational products as well as our new supplement line and our nutritional coaching app. It's fabulous. You guys will love it. Check them out. Click them. Bye. I'll catch you next week.